So just like a post it. Okay, so we're getting started, and this is our lead. This is a quick me a le quick leader meeting um, on January eighth. Gosh, I what's the date today? Nine. Tenth. Tenth. Okay, good. I don't know what day it is. None of us knows. Um, of January uh, 2019, and so we're going to be talking about three key things, and the first one has three parts to it. And this is my sort of this is my um, original material that I want to share with you. And this is um, having to do with team building and setting goals for yourself and for your own team and helping them set goals as well. You know, wouldn't it feel good if you knew how to work with your team each month, how to set goals? Wouldn't that feel better than like just throwing darts at stuff and not really knowing what you're doing? Um, and a lot of you are just innately good at this sort of thing, but I want to give you a little bit of structure that we've never really had before. And the first one that I want to f want you to think about is the things I want to do. The first one is to teach you to consistently focus on a ten thousand dollar central group. Now, remember, a group leader is a thirty five hundred dollar central group. So you and they combined, whoever they all are, <coughs> have to sell thirty five hundred dollars. But what I want you to focus on is how do I get that? more often than not to a $10,000 central group. Now, obviously, if you just promoted out a group leader for the first time, you'll be building back up to that. But I wanna show you some ways of looking at that goal. Here's what happens when you have a $10,000 central group in, in a particular month. Think about the income that you would have compared to a $3,500 group. Think about how, how icky it feels to worry at the end of every month, do I have enough PSAQs, right? Do they have enough parties? Do I know what parties they have? And that's just a common thing for group leaders in their first year as a group leader. That's just kind of a normal, but so I want to elevate your thinking because if we can, if we can get past the idea that we're just fighting against that minimum and instead start pushing toward an actual goal, I think you're going to start getting somewhere. So I want you to focus on a $10,000 central group goal. So how, what I want you to do, first of all, you're gonna ask yourself some questions and you might wanna write these down. The first one is, how many parties is that? How many parties really is a $10,000 central group? Let's pretend the average party is 750. Can somebody do the math? How many actual parties would be $10,000? And the people who are sick don't have to do the math. Somebody who's not sick. <laughs> 13.3. So 14 parties. <clears throat> so 14 parties on your team would theoretically, if they all hold, would give you a $10,000 central group. So my next question is, where would the parties come from? Where would the parties come from? Generally. The third question is, how many will I do? So in any particular month, I want you to think about something that is actually really true. And we have not really wanted to deal with this. I touched on Crystal recently. But the fact is, if we're doing four parties a month ourselves, we can maintain our title. We can maintain it. Because with four parties a month, we're probably selling you know, $3,000 or something. And we're probably sponsoring maybe one person every, I don't know, five or six weeks or so. But if you're only doing four parties, that's about the best you're going to get. If you can find a way to do five parties or six parties in a month, you're going to find that suddenly you're gaining team members faster. And instead of only doing four of those 14 parties, now you're doing six of those 14 parties and finding team members and finding parties to boot. So doing more parties actually is better. The other thing that I've noticed is that the more parties I do, the more organized I am. Now there's a limit to that. When you do more than eight parties in a month, there's a law of diminishing returns because with more than eight parties in a month, there's no way that you can focus on people. All you're doing is focusing on process and I don't want that for you. So somewhere in there in that five or six parties a month is really great sweet spot. Okay, so let's pretend that you're willing to do five parties in a month. Well, that's five of the 14. So where will the other nine come from? Who else on your team based on their goals, is going to do that. And I'm going to, in, in part two, I'm going to help you figure out who those people are and all that. 
But there's, a, there's another question besides who else will do those parties based on their goals. It's who will I sponsor this month to hold a launch and one more party this month? Wouldn't that be great? What if you spent some time each month really focusing on your sponsoring? What if we did and we found one new person every single month who held a launch and one more party where there's two more parties out of that 14, right? So I've got five. Maybe my new person has two because we really don't want her to just do one party. We really want her to do two to, kick it, to get it going. Then the next question is, who um, on my team can I help sponsor? Who's, who are, who's my hotshot on my team? Who's doing enough parties to actually be able to sponsor? Who can I help on my team bring on a sponsor? Who will do a party and one more party, a launch party and one more? So suddenly that could be potentially two more parties, a launch and another party. What if two people on your team decided to bring on a friend, especially with Glam Cash back? Suddenly that's two, three, four more parties. And suddenly we're inching toward that 14. Suddenly $10,000 doesn't seem so out of reach. When you start breaking it down into the number of parties and who's actually going to be going to do those parties. So I want you to be thinking strategically every month, how do I do $10,000 in sales? How do I hit that 14 parties between myself and my team members? Let's face it, it's a lot harder in July than it is in January. Although for some people, January is kind of hard because their team members aren't quite awake yet, right? From the holidays, they haven't quite regrouped, gotten their heads on straight and ordered their catalogs. That's okay. The reality is that in the month of January, you've got some real advantages. And I just want to point these out. People can still book parties in the month of January. And you as leaders, I want you to be very aware of this. In the month of January, they could still be booking parties as late as the 24th and 25th of the month. Because they could still be booking a party for the 30th, 29th, 30th, 31st, and closing those parties. I mean, the only, we only need five days to do a party, really. To do a really good party. So I want you to always be thinking <coughs> about what's possible for you and your team members that they can all still be booking, they can all still be sponsoring new people up till the 24th, 25th, 26th, and getting those parties in by the end of the month. So you've got a, a really good shot at hitting some much higher numbers this month. Okay, so that's the focus on the $10,000 central group sales. Doesn't that feel better than focusing on the minimums? Oh gosh, how am I gonna hit 3,500? Well, think about it, $3,500 divided by 700 is only five parties. That's with a $700 party average, okay? So somehow we gotta figure out how to get out of that mindset <coughs> and start focusing on a much bigger goal than that because you are all capable of this. Thinking strategically and helping women set individual goals and that's part two. So helping your team members set individual goals. Not everybody wants to. Not everybody on your team cares. If you've got three people on your team, it might be that two of them don't care at this point but maybe one does. And so I want to give you some questions that you can be asking your team members, hopefully by phone. I know it's okay. I'm all right, Mary. I'm Mary. I'm okay. I, I'll survive. But the good news is that it means that I'm going to go fast. So there are some good questions that we can use and maybe you can write these down. So it, it is better to reach out to team members toward the end of a month about the next month typically, but January is kind of the anomaly because people are just now waking up, okay? And we've got an entire long month to book parties. Um, so you want to reach out to each team member toward the end of a month, preferably, but even right now is just fine because it's only the 10th. So the question that you want to ask is, <clears throat> what do you want to accomplish in January? What would you like to accomplish in January? That's a good question to ask. <clears throat> kind of open-ended. Another question is how much money do you want to make in January to pay off Christmas, to pay for the soccer camp, whatever, you know, whatever you know is important to them. How much money do you want to make? The third question is how much time do you want to spend on your business this month? In this month, how much time do you have? 
because every month is different for people, right? Okay, the next one is what dates do you want to do parties? When do you actually want to do parties? Let me help you do a little calendar control. I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. <coughs> there, I did it. I feel yes. better. <laughs> so what dates do you want to do parties? Because if we can help her do calendar control, she's more likely to get what she focuses on. And we don't want her going, well, I've got all these 10 dates available. No. We want her to set a limited number of dates available because if she doesn't book a date, we would rather she actually worked that night to book her calendar for later in the month and into February. So if she says she wants four parties or two parties, get her to do um, a better calendar control where if she just wants two parties, that she's picked maybe four dates that she's willing to book two of, okay? Don't let her pick 10 because that's not enough of a focus for a person. So what dates do you want to do parties? Then the next question is, who were some people who were maybes last fall? Who were some people that you can reach out to today? Give me three names of people that you could reach out to today to offer a party to. And a couple of maybes from back in the fall. Customers who said that they wanted a party, but we never quite got it got on the calendar, which happens to all of us. So we want to get her thinking specifically about who. Give me the names. And this is all like rapid fire. This is quick. It's not like a let's have lunch and, you know, work on your business. This is, we got to keep these things quick and simple and easy for them. But who are some people you can reach out today to offer a party to and get her to tell you who they are? Okay, great. How about we come up with a text message together that you were comfortable sending to these people? Because if she's stuck and doesn't have any parties on her calendar, you're, it's okay to dive in and help her. I used to have the philosophy, gosh, if she can't even book a party, what good is she, right? Now I'm realizing that Sometimes women just need a little extra mojo and they need our hand holding to do that. And it can make an enormous difference. If we can just get the wheels greased a little bit, start pushing her up the hill, she can start pedaling on her own. So then we come up with a couple of text messages and verbiage that'll help her to, to get her on her way toward her individual goals. So that's the second part is helping set individual goals with people. Those who are interested, those who are not interested, I don't want you to think, that suddenly it's because you're a terrible leader. Oh, she hates me. What have I done wrong? Surely I have failed her. You know, these are independent consultants and we want them to be independent. And, and I know that sort of flies in the face of what I just said about helping them to book a party. But if we can teach them to book a party, it might be that they then become an independent consultant because now they've got some confidence under the belt. Okay, so the third component of all of this, we've got the $10,000 central group helps set the individual goals. And the third part is central group calendar. So we've, with some of you, I've talked about this, about creating a central group calendar and finding out, okay, put your parties on there, put their parties on there as they start to book them. And it's not so that we can control things, but it's interesting, you know, we go, oh, it's so we can cheer them on. Actually, no. It, honestly, the best and highest good that can come of having a central group calendar so that you can help each person host coach each party that they have. What we're finding is that host coaching is literally the thing that we're forgetting to do. Of course, now we have this great new host coaching checklist. We had one and it has just been updated and expanded. So it has verbiage in it. Yes, thank you, Jack. That's great. And I love it. Literally, if we can teach them to start working with this host coaching checklist, it's going to make their, their um, business easier. But this we was really great today. I just have mm -hmm. to say, this was just really great today because I made a couple of host coaching calls. Uh -huh. I just, I mean, I didn't have each one per person, but I mean, if, you, it, <clears throat> if you're not <laughs> using this, sorry. Um, seriously, this was amazing today. I, <clears throat> so. <laughs> I know. I just say that. I'm glad we're not all in the same room because the rest of you would be sick right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell you. That's, that's awesome, Jacqueline. So here's the thing. No host coaching on their part. Let's assume you have all new team members. They don't know how to host coach. They might know a little bit of common sense stuff, but no host coaching leads to low attendance, low sales, and major disappointments and people who quit. This is the number one thing that we can do for our team members right away and every month 
So checking the day before the party with your team member, like how's the party looking tomorrow night? It literally does no good, no good, no good. We have, so what does help? Well, walking alongside of your new, newer, newer or inexperienced team members in the entire host coaching process several times so that she learns the system through doing it with you. Use that host coaching checklist for every single party she has with her step-by-step. -step. Honestly, I would use it for at least three or four parties with each new team member just to make sure that she understands the rhythm, the mindset, why we do things the way that we do. And then you can do a day after the party kind of a call with your consultant to do a little post-mortem. So tell her ahead of time before the, before the day of the party that you're going to ask her some questions the day after the party so that she's prepared. And you're going to do this every single time. Now, you're not going to do this with your experienced people unless you see a dip in her party sales. And if there's a dip in her party sales, it means that you can help her with her host coaching. So the questions are, did you have fun last night at the party? That's the first question. The second one was, is what did you like best about the party? The third one is, what would you do differently next time? Because there's always, always, always something, right? The fourth question is, how many parties were you able to book with a date? And do you need any help getting the dates? I can give you some ideas on getting the dates. Okay. The next one is, how many sponsored leads did you find? Who do you really want to, who do you want to follow, follow up with about the business? So we get the names. So what we're trying to do is to get her thinking systematically each time about how to actually diagnose how did the party go. Then the next question is, how much did you sell? Right? Notice I didn't talk about the sales. And she might blurt it out. Oh my gosh, I sold, you know, $1,200 and yay, you know, we want to congratulate it. But that's not really the focus. The be it's a great thing because it means that if she, if she sold 1200, she probably has people curious about the business and could very well book to party because she got in front of that many people. And then the last question that we can ask her is how much did you earn last night? Cause we want to celebrate with her about her income from that party that she just did so that she feels good about that. So those are some of the things that I've been thinking about that I really think are some of our misses, our, our key misses that we are experiencing in working with our team members um, and in setting our own goals for our teams each month. Okay. Any questions about that or thoughts? Any ahas on that part? Are y'all like, oh my gosh, $10,000? <laughs> How am I ever going to do that? Oh, yeah, you will. Okay. Second thing I want to show you is a couple of, um, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of new things that we have from the company. I want to share the screen real fast and go into Glam Central and show you. Um, so we have a couple of new documents that are really great and tools. This one, oh, if I can move this. Is something called your role as a group leader. It's a PDF and it talks about the, 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 the four key things, leading by example, helping new consultants succeed, building vision for their future, and creating community within your own team, which is a ton of fun. And then the next part of this document, you're going to want to find this and print this out because it's really pretty cool. And it talks about new consultant training and what's your role as a leader? And then what is the sponsor's role? So if you've got team members who are starting to sponsor, this will give you a sense of what you as the group leader can do and what the sponsor can do while you're helping to onboard that sponsor's new team members. And this is a great problem to have. You go, oh my gosh, I got to control all this. No, actually you don't. You're going to be facilitating some really neat things. And this is just a really great cheat sheet to help you think about how to make that happen. This particular thing talks about the onboarding process and it alludes to Ready, Set, Glam call number one. I know for Star Thrower team, we actually do that call every Monday night at eight o'clock. That doesn't absolve you of doing it yourself because I want that to be the fallback. So that if somebody just signed up and, or they're thinking about signing up, I want them to hear it live. 
and to watch it on the Zoom, but then I really want you going through it with the, your team members and your team members' team members is on your own. Observation party, that's obvious. And then, but then there's another call that is now available, the Ready, Set, Glam call number two. There are scripts and slides. I'm gonna show you where all this is in a second. And then now there's a Ready, Set, Glam call number three, script three and slides. If you remember the five parts of the new consultant checklist, <clears throat> there are five main sections. And call number one actually covers the, the, three first the, the first three sections. But we now have a training that covers the fourth section and the fifth section. So I wanna show these to you really quickly. And then the best thing that you can do is to go through and actually print these things out for yourself so you, so you have them. And get used to using them. So let's see here. You're going to find them under leadership and under new consultant success. Can y'all see this? And here's the Ready, Set, Glam Call 1 script and the slides. Here's the Glam Call 2 script and the slides. And then here's the one for the number three as well and the slides. Um, get used to the, this material because here's what's really great about it. The more often that you use it when you're onboarding new people, they're going to go, oh, this was easy. I could do that because it's so duplicatable. Betsy didn't make up anything. She just used what the company already gave her because it's already available. So these are some really great um, things that you can use. I wanted to share with you one other thing. Let me stop share. Um, I hit on an idea recently that I want to challenge you with. This Ready, Set, Glam guide is the basis for all of those trainings and all of those slides. Um, what I have started doing is taking this to every, taking three of these to every party. Because what, I'm, what I have decided is that this is actually my best sponsoring tool. And I'll tell you why. I really think that women <clears throat> are afraid of something new if they can't see the roadmap. And if I've got somebody sitting in front of me who's a little bit curious about the business, I want to be able to say to her, you know, sometimes people feel kind of overwhelmed with the idea of starting anything new, and I totally get it. And there's a fear of failure, especially if they've tried another company in the past. But you know what? Why don't I just give you this thing? Because literally, this is the roadmap that we use with every new consultant. Let me just give you the co a copy of it so you can see what it is that we do as new consultants. Just flip through it. And if you can picture yourself doing some of this, it might be worth us talking. Okay. These things cost a dollar, and they're available in business supply. I order them a 10 at a time at this point because I want to give these out to people. I put my, my information on my labels on the back. I want to make sure that my hostess has one if she's the least bit curious because I don't want to wait until her kid arrives. I want people who are considering the business to look at this thing. So I'm, I'm all packed for my party on Saturday <clears throat> and I've got five of these in here because the hostess and a friend of mine who lives nearby are both looking at the business and I'm going to give, I want to give out three more of these. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't I want to give them out? Right? So just a thought that I had. Um, I feel like this is a really smart use of a great resource, you know, and the cool thing is that then they already have it. So let's say she decides, yeah, I think I'll do it. She's already got a copy of it sitting there. So when I'm going through, you know, Ready, Set, Glam, Ready, Set, Glam 1, she's already got that whole Ready, Set, Glam guide sitting in front of her. She can flip through all the pages and do it along with me. So I think it's a great, um, I think it's something that we could really consider doing this, this month. I'm challenging myself to do this um, for the next five or six parties to see how I do with it. <clears throat> so any thoughts or comments on that? Ideas? Okay. So the only thing I was going to say is that we sort of talked about a little bit about last night is the other thing that I did that I started to do is I have the sparkle consultant, whatever, you know, that, yeah. can't, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. call it now. Yeah, that thing. And I took that and I have the, and I, I know it's a little bit of an expense, but I printed out the glam cash back and I yeah. stuck one in every one of those. Yeah. And so yeah. that is something that I was going to send home with absolutely everybody. And yeah. then taking your idea. I had that too. One step further. And then just, you know, 
And I was even thinking of getting little bows, like, like this is a gift. That's cute. You know, just because. Why not? You're going to see those lined up, whatever, like make it just a little bit something special. I don't know. That's very cute. Yeah. I, I, I printed out 10 copies of the um, Glam Cash back to give out with each receipt on Saturday night. I figure why not? That We've got a great story to tell. Why wouldn't I want to share that with everybody somehow in a tangible way? Thanks, Jack. Okay. Last thing I want to bring up is something called homecoming. Um, homecoming is a special incentive trip for people who reach director by the end of July. And the incentive trip is will take place in October. It'll be to the home office, all expenses paid, airfare, hotel, all your meals, and tour of the Swarovski headquarters. I'm sure there will be a very swishy dinner, at least one of the nights, because they treat us really beautifully. And some high-level training. The senior directors and the senior executive directors are not invited. Only those who reach director by uh, July 31st, are there 31 days in July? The last day of July, of this year. If someone reached director in 2017 or 2018, they are also eligible for this trip. Deanna Goody, <laughs> for example, um, as long as you promote out two new group leaders yourself between now and July 31st, whatever the last day of July is. Um, it doesn't matter. It does not matter if you promote up to some other level. That's fine, too. But it's at least directors and above. But no seniors will be there. Um, it's just for you guys. So I want to talk to you about what does this mean? Because <clears throat> I want to set your sights on the fact that this is actually not a hard thing. And I'm going to share with you why. Um, director means that you have two group leaders on your team. Now, they cannot be stacked. I mean, you can have them stacked, but that won't be a director. A director is two side by side. Those group leaders do not have to be your personal sponsors. So let's say you sponsored Beyonce. Beyonce sponsored J-Lo. Beyonce flies off to you know the south of France and leaves J-Lo, but J-Lo goes to group leader. J-Lo is your first level group leader, even though you didn't sponsor her. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it's not just the people that you've sponsored. It's anybody in your central group could be a group leader for you, a first level group leader. So that's an important component. You want to be digging down, digging for treasure, looking at your, so maybe you got five people on your team, three are direct and two others aren't. It might be that it's one of those people who are not even direct to you becomes a group leader on your team. So how do you find a group leader? Well, there are two things you want to look for. The first one you want to look for is who on my team already has one person? Who on my team already has one person? You want to start with those people. Or if she has two people, even easier, start with her. Okay? And work with your upline um, senior director to figure out how can you approach that person. If she's already got two, how do we get her the third one and get her the numbers, right? The second way of looking at it is who has the most parties? Who's doing the most sales? Because the people who are doing the most sales are getting in front of the most people and they can be taught to sponsor because they're getting in front of people. If people aren't getting in front of people, it, they're not going to sponsor. It's just, it's all about the number of parties they're doing. So if you've got some hot shots doing parties, that could be your next group leader. And again, talk with your upline director, leader, SED, SD about what are the words that I say to position it to these, to these potential group leaders. I want to leave you with this thought. If you have no shot, in, no idea who your group leaders are on your team, who your two group leaders are, I want you to realize that for you, between you and director is only eight people. Eight people. In five months. Those eight people are the future group leader and the other future group leader and three people on each of their teams. It's only eight people that you're really looking for. 
Okay, so this is not at all an impossibility. This is completely possible. This is something that all of you can do to go to the home office. Um, I've been a number of times and I always love walking in to the home office with someone who's never been there before because inevitably she's crying. <laughs> There's something so remarkable. It's not that it's a gorgeous building. It's, the, it's a powerful presence to walk into the home office, to see the word Swarovski on the front of the building and on all the sides of the building and go, oh, we really are owned by Swarovski. This really is our parent company. <coughs> to see the incredible chandelier in the little lobby that changes color. To have your picture taken in front of the little waterfall in the lobby that's so iconic and everybody does that. And then the to walk swan. in and the, the swan, the swan. On the side of the building mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's an awe-inspiring experience the first time you go. I want you all to have that. The entire home office team will be in the lobby waiting for you and clapping and hugging you and they will know you by name and they will invite you into the meeting room and everything has sparkle all around it. You'll see all these creations throughout the entire building that have Swarovski crystals all over it. It's ridiculous. It's an awe-inspiring experience. With any luck, you'll be able to meet Dan Cohen and maybe even have dinner with him. I'm hoping that they're planning it around his travel schedule because I want that for you guys. I want you to have dinner with Dan Cohen, who is the president of Swarovski North America, and he was our founder of Touchstone Crystal. Um, this is an all-expenses-paid trip. Every bit of it is paid for by the company. I want this for each of you. I really, really do. Because what it will show you, way beyond what Glam Jam can do, it will show you the power of our brand name and of our parent company and the power of what Touchstone Crystal is going to be. And that you guys, this new class of directors coming up, you're the ones who are going to, going to be propelling this company into an enormous company nationwide. We are one-tenth the size of what we're going to be, one-tenth. And it's not me. It's not the other SDs who are going to be creating the momentum. It's you. It's each one of you. It's going to be every party looking for new people, finding those people who want to find the three. It's you finding those eight special people between now and the end of July. You can totally do this. And the really cool thing is that your income will change dramatically your sense of confidence in seeing those women succeed will be something you've never experienced before. It is a beautiful thing. And I believe in each one of you. I know you can do this. And I want you to be thinking about who are those special women that you, maybe you know them now, maybe you'll be meeting them this month who really need Touchstone Crystal and really need a leader income, okay? So I haven't seen all the details yet about homecoming. It'll be coming soon. Um, they were probably working on it right before we all went to Las Vegas. <laughs> and now they're all at the home office sick too. So um, sometime very soon, we'll see all the details. But the qualification period is between now and the end of July. Promote out two new group leaders. And um, the trip will be in October. So any questions about that? <clears throat> Anybody excited about it? Anybody want to go? I do. Okay. <laughs> good good I will be very excited for oh is that Mitch <gasps> it's Mitch where, go? where are we going <laughs> uh, you can't go sorry <laughs> no Austria he wants to go to Austria that's easy <coughs> yes you're going to Austria you're gonna go to Austria in September okay all right oh, any questions that's yeah I have something hey, Amy sure <sighs> I don't, I don't even have the words like just every month it gets better and better. And I just, I didn't think that was possible. It was like, all right, one of these days it's going to level off and it's just going to be okay. But they just keep giving and keep offering and keep making everything just so amazing. We're, we're just, we're just so blessed. Oh, I could not have said it any better. I totally agree. 
I'm so glad you feel that way, Amy. That brings tears to my eyes, and that's not just my cold. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm like getting like a hot flash here almost. Like, I, I, know. I feel like, mm -hmm. I don't know. We, we are, you all are it. You are at the forefront. You are the ones who are going to top leadership. And you're the ones who are going to create the explosion in this company. And Lindsay and Terry and Shauna and I are just delighted to empower you to do this. That's our, that's our goal is to empower you all to do this and to make the most of all this. So anything else? <clears throat> Comments, questions? Anything else? Okay. Crazy, about, crazy about you all. Thank you so, so much for your 45 minutes. I really appreciate it. And I hope it was helpful. We gave you some things to think about. We are for you. We love you. And we're here to do everything we can to make sure that you get everything you want from your business. Have a great night, everybody. And take care and feel better. Thanks, <laughs> Betsy. Thanks, Betsy. It was great. Good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you feel better. I will. Thank you. Take care.